This is the second in our series of videos on section 1.4. Um, in this video I'm going to do another example of a direct proof for you. This time we're going to prove this result here which says that if a, b, and c are integers um, and if a divides b and b divides c then a divides c. So for this proof we have to uh, make use of the working definition of divisibility, which I did uh, a couple of videos ago. So you have to look up the definition of what it means for one integer to divide another integer. Okay, so let's begin by writing this statement in symbols. Since the a, b, and c are unspecified, the assumption here is, or the implication here is, that no matter which a, b, and c's you pick, as long as they satisfy these conditions, then we get the conclusion, and so this should be universally quantified. So here it is written in symbols for all integers a, b, and c. If a divides b and b divides c, then a divides c. These vertical lines, uh, the, that notation was introduced a couple of videos ago when I talked about examples of working definitions. So, since this is universally quantified, and it's P implies Q, then the uh, proof, uh, the direct proof, would begin with the sentence, uh, let A, B, and C be integers, suppose A divides B and B divides C, and the very last sentence would be something like, therefore A divides C. Okay, so let's make a proof table in order to come up with the... Um, all of the intermediate steps of the proof. Okay, here you see our proof table and it's always going to be the case that the first line of it comes from the hypothesis A divides B and B divides C and the reason is always because we're making the assumption that the hypothesis is true in a direct proof. The last line of the table is the conclusion. So you can see that I put that down here. And at, at this point I don't really know why it's why I'm going to be able to assert that, so I have to leave that blank. Let's now go backwards from here and fill in using the working definition of A divide, divide C. We'll put in um, that working definition here and that would then um, allow me to deduce this last line. I can't write the reason for that at this point. I don't know why I can say that, but once I have this, then this follows by definition of A divides C. Now let's go backwards from this step here and fill in what it means to say that A divides B and B divides C. So the definition uh, that A divides B is that b can be written as a times some integer, and b divides c means that c can be written as b times some integer. Now, our in so is it clear how we can get from here to here very easily? In this step, we're trying to write c as a times something. But here we see we've got c is b times something, and b can be written as a times something. So if we just simply substitute this b for AL, we'll get C written as A times something, and that will get us very close to this step here. So we'll do that on the next line. Okay, so you see that I've written, I've copied this one down again, and then I've substituted for B the quantity AL, and that gave me this. Now what's the connection between these two? I've written C as A times this thing, and so I want that thing to be this k. So I just need to verify that that thing is an integer. Well, it is an integer um, because the product of any two integers is an integer. We refer to that as the closure property under multiplication of the integers. So now I can fill in this step here. The reason for this is just simply the substitution of k for l times m. So this is just simply substitution. So now that we have the entire table, we'll next use it to write up 
our formal proof of the proposition. All right, so here's the complete proof. So it's routine that the first sentence has to be let a, b, and c be integers. So that comes from this thing here. And it's also routine that the second sentence should come from here. It, it should say, suppose that a divides b and b divides c. Now we go to the table to produce our sequence of um, statements that we're going to use. This one is used here. We say, then by definition there exist integers k and l such that b equals al and c equals bm. And now we make use of uh, this line here to say, after substituting b for al in the second equation, so you see I've substituted this b by al in this equation, we obtain c equals alm. And now um, I'm able to get to this. Um, I'm making use of this fact here. Uh, since lm is an integer, it follows by definition that a divides c. You see, because we've got c is equal to a times an integer, and that by definition is what it means to say that a divides c. So that's the end of the proof. Now, I did say at the outset that the very last sentence of the proof should be, uh, therefore, a divides c, because of this. I didn't do that, but, um, you know, you don't have to write it exactly like that. I did write, it follows uh, that a divides c. So, in other words, we were able to deduce this. And so that's just as good as writing, um, therefore, a divides c.